Hello and thank you for coming to check this out. We're going to have a look at the basics of auto-adjusting titles and how to do that in Motion 5 for your Final Cut titles. So I'm here in Final Cut, I have a basic uh, auto-sizing title. If I change the font type, the size, if I add more or add another line, then the main animation elements are going to adjust and keep up with those changes. There's also some basic publishing here to have some control over the length of the line and the height as well. So if you're just starting out in motion and you are wanting to make titles for Final Cut. These are good things to know. Let's jump over to Motion and see how it's done. I'm starting here in a new Final Cut Titles template. It's set up with some basic on-screen controls. I have my text object here in this group. I'm just using the Roboto font, font size of 100. It's centered in the canvas by format and position and all the groups are centered for position as well. So the first thing we're going to do is have a look at the basic build to get a shape to auto adjust to another object's size and we're using text objects in this example. I'm going to add another group and I'll call that group my base. I'll drop that under the title group and with that group selected I'm going to grab my rectangle tool here and drag a rectangle into the canvas and rename that as base. Let's uh, make sure you're in uh, properties. Let's reset the position and come to shape style and we will give it some color. The first thing I want to do now is link the size of the shape to the size of the text. So come to Geometry, we'll grab Size and choose Add Parameter Behavior Link. And drag in the text as the source. Uh, we want the target, uh, the source parameter here to be Object Attribute Size or, and I'll rename my link to Size. So now if I grab the text and add more, you see the shape will adjust, but if I add more lines, the shape will become out of sync. So we're going to add the align to behavior to complete this build. With the shape selected, come to behaviors, choose basic motion, align to, and drag in the text as the source. So now the shape is linked to the text by size and aligned to the center of the text. Well, the center of the shape is aligned to the center of the text. And the centers of each object are determined by the anchor point position. So now if I grab the text and add more lines, the shape will adjust correctly. And since the introduction of the Align To behavior in Motion 5.2, this has become a really common feature and a great feature in Motion when you're making titles for Final Cut. But what we're going to do is use this as a starting point to make a different kind of animation. So the next step is to uh, animate that shape to draw in. The first thing that we want to do is change the height of our shape. Now we linked the size of the shape to the size of the text, so if I come here to the height and try to change that, nothing will happen. So my alternative is to look at the scale of the shape, and the scale is independent of the size. So I could change the Y scale to make it thinner. And that's good to know because for other situations you would want to rely on that as an alternative. But for now we don't need that because 
for the animation we want to do, we only need the width linked to the text. So let's come to the link behavior. Let's change the target parameter to be width and change the source parameter to be width. And don't forget to turn the link back on. So now I can come to the shape and adjust the width to suit. Let's go for 15. The other change I want to make is that I want the line to animate out further past the ends of the text here. So let's come to the behavior. And here in the X offset, let's add a value of 150. So now I want to animate this shape to draw in. We cannot use the width to do that because that is still tied up with the link. So we will now come to properties and take advantage of the scale. So with the playhead at the start, let's set a keyframe on the X value for the scale. And I'm going to turn off the align to behavior right now to get the best performance. Let's bring the playhead to 20 frames. The project is 30 frames a second, so I'm looking at two thirds of a second here. Uh, and we'll set a keyframe on X scale and come back to the start of the project again and drop that to zero. So now I have my X scale keyframe curve here. I'm going to grab that, uh, set the interpolation to Bezier, break the tangent on that handle and drag that handle over. So there's our animation for the line. So next we want to make a mask to reveal the text in after the line animates. I'm going to use the base shape to make the mask. So with the shape selected, let's duplicate it. And I will rename it as mask. And let's come to style and give it another color so that we can tell it apart. I want to make a couple of changes. First of all, I want the height of my mask to be really tall so that it can reveal all those other lines of text that we might have. So let's come to geometry and I'm going to make the height to be at least the height of my project. So I'm in a 1920 by 1080 project. I'm going to make the height 1080. Also, I don't want the width of the mask to be as wide as the animating line. So let's come to the size link here and drop this X offset down to 25. I also don't want the mask to come in at the same time as the line. So let's bring the playhead to 20 frames, select the mask and I'm going to use on my keyboard the shift left bracket hotkey to move that object forward in the timeline by 20 frames. Okay, so we have the mask source ready to go. Let's select the text group, choose add image mask drag in mask as the source and we will leave that uh, blender mode set to add and with the playhead at the beginning of the animation at 20 frames we'll grab the text and trim that out as well. I'm going to use I on my keyboard. But we can still see the blue line so we're going to select the base shape add an image mask and drag in the mask as the source but now we will change the blend mode to subtract. 
and let's turn the align to behaviors back on. So let's have a quick look at what we can publish here. Um, right, we can publish the color of our base shape. And let's publish the opacity as well. And also, we want to be able to change the height of the object in Final Cut. So in geometry, I'm going to publish height and to allow for the length of the line to be adjusted we're going to grab that size link come to the x offset and publish that so we'll come to the published parameters i've gone to project in the layers panel and we are here now in the publishing section let's just change these to line color and line opacity line height and line length So let's do a quick check on everything. I'll grab the text and okay, that is working uh, just as we want it to. So from here, we want to animate everything out. To animate everything out, we'll just reverse the keyframes. So first, I'm going to reset my play range and bring my playhead to about 8 seconds and come to the mark menu and choose mark play range in so we can work up this side now uh, right we want to animate the mask back the other way first so let's grab the mask source and I'm going to turn off the align to behaviors while I do this so I'm going to grab that curve in there and select copy and with the playhead at 8 seconds 19 I will set a keyframe and command V to paste grab those keyframes and choose reverse keyframes and I'm just going to come to properties and make sure there are no discrepancies sometimes when you reverse keyframes uh, you'll find the line is not straight exactly but that looks fine right so here where the mask has animated back let's grab the base shape and grab that curve and do the same Okay, I'll reset the play range. And turn the align to behaviors back on. So there you are. Uh, so my point for this guide was to point out some basic ideas for creating auto-adjusting shapes. This is very basic. Trust me, it can get very complicated and detailed from here. You'll be surprised uh, at the amount of automation you can achieve um, from this basic build, using this as a starting point. Uh, when I have time, I'm going to add more and more to these basic guides. So we're going to focus on uh, what we can do in motion to prepare title templates for Final Cut but with a mind uh, thinking about how in Final Cut things are going to change around so we want our animations to adjust and adapt to those whereas when we just make stuff in motion uh, you know everything just stays the way it is
Okay, if you're beginning in motion, I hope that this was very useful for you. Thanks for checking it out and thanks for watching.